everybody, welcome back. Uh, we have another GoPro up here. It's kind of a small crowd for a GoPro, I don't know. Doesn't everybody want a GoPro? You know you do. Uh, coming up right now, we have Bruce Ross. He is with IBM Cloud Object Storage, and he's going to talk about managing your digital assets, uh, something that is we can all use. And uh, at the end of it, we make sure you have a ticket, because we're going to be doing the drawing a little bit differently this time. So hold on to that ticket. That's how you might get a Hero 5 Black Edition. Take it away. Bruce. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all for showing up today. It's a real pleasure to speak here at Trinity Media West. Perfect spot. So, um, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm uh, the uh, Global Solutions Leader for Media and Entertainment at IBM Cloud Object Storage. We we're formerly known as CleverSafe, and CleverSafe has a, uh, a storage product that I'll be talking about today. Um, I wanted to go into the introduction. First of all, uh, I've been in the media space for 30 years and have been uh, involved with media infrastructure, content distribution, production, media asset management, and so on with a number of companies. So in today's, uh, today's uh, media, we're finding that there's an explosion of media content. I think every one of you out there has been seeing the files grow and grow and grow. And we're building out more and more storage to accommodate it. Second area I want to talk about is the storage fundamentals. What kind of storage do we use today and how how is IBM's cloud offering different? Uh, third, I want to talk about our storage. Fourth is our media applications. What kind of applications are we doing with media companies? Because we do a whole host of applications across different industries. And then uh, talk about our on-prem, our hybrid, and our cloud offerings. We're the only company that provides that kind of thing. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with this scene. Uh, and it could be the uh, scene from the Raiders of the Lost Ark looking for that one videotape. And we've gone through the digitization process. So we went through that uh, a few years back. And almost all the customers now have moved to their uh, moved their archives to digital. Uh, and what we're seeing is that meta media data is growing by leaps and bounds. And you'll see it's not only video, it's photos, it's emails, it's rich web content, it's music. And it keeps going 60 to 80 percent per year. It's incredible. Everyone's got an iPhone or a, 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 a camera. We're storing more and more of that stuff in our cloud. So going a little bit more, it's a new golden age of content with the streaming video uh, crowd coming on the scene. All the traditional broadcasters said, hey, we got to keep up. We have to make more and more episodic content. We have more episodic content now. I'm sure there are 20 shows you've never heard of that are favorites of somebody else sitting right next to you. And so we're seeing more and more of that on TV networks, on premium cable, on regular cable networks. And now we have Netflix, Amazon, Prime, Hulu. We've got Roku and YouTube. And and we've also got live sporting events. So there is no shortage of content. Where do we keep all this stuff? Where do you guys keep it, you right? Okay, so we've got, we've got that, that problem. And here's one thing that I, I noticed recently that Hollywood Studios recently discovered virtual reality. It's been around for years. But Hollywood is really doing some investments. Last spring, we saw a lot of investments uh, by Hollywood. Raw and finished content is expanding, and I didn't want to over-dramatize it here, but I think the Adam Bob is really a, a good semaphore here, because directors are shooting 20 hours a day for one hour of video content, and they'll do 20 to 30 terabytes a day. Where do you store all that stuff? In the past, editors would do compressed editing on HD content. Now they're using 4K and high dynamic range to master. So that generates a lot of intermediate pieces, a lot of renders. Uh, there are more versions of finished content. There's collaborative editing, which creates all kinds of content in many locations around the organization. And there's more and more versions. So we've got IMF in Hollywood, and they're creating 20 different versions of the same content. So if you look at the numbers, I did a little calculation back of the envelope, we can do individual shows in VR or in uh, 4K that are 50 to 100 terabytes each. 
So an entire season will give you about a petabyte. That's a lot of storage. So oh, anyway, uh, just to hit the point again, if you look at the relative file sizes between 4K, 6K, which Aerie and Red are now generating, and 8K, we saw a camera from NHK recently where they're doing an editing system in HK. We did that at, uh, IBM did that at the uh, IBC show. And these are some numbers. And just to give you kind of an idea, the capacity per hour for a high definition is 450 gigabytes raw. For uh, 8K resolution at 30 frames is 26.8 thousand gigabytes per hour. So we're getting to terabytes per hour with 8K. Even 4K uh, resolution is 1.7 terabytes per hour. That's a lot of content. And so on, we've gone from terabytes to tens of petabytes. And that's the whole idea here with all the different flavors in the past five to seven years. Okay, so. Um, if you look at basic storage, we had block storage back in the day. It was great, it was clunky, it worked. File storage, we're all familiar with filers, we're all familiar with, you know, you've got all your directories and subdirectories and stuff. That's great for human readable content. But more and more, we're using content management systems, we're using computers to read our content, we're doing analytics. So object storage has come along, which gives you a single flat namespace. Files now become objects that are stored in buckets. A bucket is a URL in a storage system. The content is encrypted when it's written and decrypted when it's, when, it's, uh, when it's pulled back. And we have encryption at rest. So that's the whole concept with object storage and IBM has mastered that, uh, that technology. Uh, we've seen in the past RAID clusters. Everyone has RAID, they have, you know, I, I don't want to name any names here, but uh, we're all familiar with our RAID systems and our shared storage. And there are certain things they do great and certain things they do poorly. They're great at high bandwidth and high IOPS. Really good at 2K editing, 4K mastering if you use disk plus flash. Uh, video effects, motion graphics, all of those pieces are great for short term storage. They're not so great for long term storage however. So they're bad at that. Projects that go on hold, you really don't want that on your online storage. Raw source content, you really don't need that on your storage. Uh, IMF content, multiple versions, and archive programs and graphics. And once you get past two petabytes, raids don't scale very well. I'm sure there are people in the audience who give me a big argument about that, but I would say that eventually there's so much data management and so, many, so much work that goes into it. So that's why object storage is way better. So a better solution for large tier two and tier three storage. Like I said before, tier one should stay on RAID, should stay on, you know, on your favorite RAID system. Uh, so you would have RAID six plus replication, and then you would have a mirror of your RAID six, and then you might even have a backup for your mirrored RAID six. And there are a lot of, vent a lot of customers who actually do this, and it's very costly. So if you look at if we use IBM Cloud Object Storage or an object storage solution, we can cut the amount of overhead in storage from 3.6 petabytes to 1.7 for your raw and get the same amount of usable storage at that rate. And that brings us down into the numbers that you would see with online kind of, you know, cloud storage. So, uh, one of the areas that I talk about is we, we instead of using the, uh, having a three tier storage arrangement, we have an active archive. Active archive can do all near line storage and all long term archiving at the same rate. So you're not moving content from online to near line to offline and back again. You're not worrying about all of the issues with mechanical <coughs> issues with your tape library or with your tape machine. You're not always replacing heads. You're not looking for new, going from LTO5 to LTO6 to LTO7. This system will grow with you. And we've got storage management with one piece of glass, 10 nines of availability. The way this is designed with erasure coding, not RAID, erasure coding, we can get 10 nines of availability. We do a three tier structure on that. 
And what we can do is we can start on-premises. So if you're an on-prem kind of kind of customer and you feel comfortable having that storage in your data center, no problem. You don't have to go cloud. If you want to though, you can expand from on-prem to cloud and do a hybrid solution. Hybrid is so important. Now we can eliminate tape libraries with high latency and we can do a, a transition to hybrid cloud and go to five petabytes and beyond. We can go to 10 and hundreds and so on. But at least that gives you an idea of where you can start and where you can go to. So where are we in the market trend, right? Where, uh, if you look at the uh, chart, this is a very typical chart for uh, adoption. And 2016, we're still at the early adopter stage. There aren't a lot of media companies who have gotten on the bandwagon just yet, but more and more people in the skunk works are starting to use object storage, either on the cloud basis or wherever. And I think in about another year, we're gonna hit the point where it's gonna become acceptable to use cloud storage for lots of different uh, storage requirements. Um, so, how does it work? Well, let's talk about Cleversafe as a company. The background uh, here is that we started out as, uh, in 2004 in Chicago and shipping products since 2008. So we've got a lot of experience under our belt, lots of customers, lots of references. It's a software-defined object storage. What does that mean? It's object storage that is written in software. So you can define exactly how you protect your content, how available it is, and so on. So you're not stuck to a certain, uh, certain algorithm. Um, it runs on industry standard COTS hardware. So you're not buying specific boxes with fancy bezels, it's just your, you know, your standard uh, servers, standard storage, and you can either buy ours or you can supply your own and we'll certify yours. And so some notable milestones, we have 400 patents. IBM valued that when they saw our company. Uh, and patents are really incredible and that's what gives us the competitive edge over a lot of our competitors. Gartner recognizes us as number one in the critical quadrant. We can go to exabytes in production, so we can actually scale up almost to infinity now. In about five years, it'll be a very, very attainable number. And we were acquired last year by IBM, and we work with our cloud partners around IBM, and we offer some, some pretty great solutions. I wanna just talk about it. Again, we're on-premises, we have hybrid or off-prem in the cloud, and we can sell it in those three ways. And uh, if we look at the building blocks, we've got three parts. We've got a manager that does all of the software definition. We've got the accessor who does the actual uh, slicing and dicing of your data. And then we've got the slice stores. That's the actual JBOD storage for the system. And not to oversimplify it, but we can work with your, uh, if, you, if you have a good deal with say Hewlett Packard or Seagate, you can buy the hardware from them and we'll supply the software, or you can buy the whole thing from us, signed, sealed, and delivered. And then um, we have, uh, we have it's basically we've got great performance, et cetera, all the great uh, you know, bells and whistles. I'm gonna skip through a few because I'm running out of time, but how it works is your data comes in to the accessor, the accessor slices it up. On the left side, you'll see that we have a 12 wide, basically three by four, and we can slice it up. We can actually lose five out of the 12 slice stores and still be in operation. And so it's kind of like uh, the, the, the uh, mathematical coding is like, if you remember algebra, you had five equations and five unknowns, and you could uniquely solve those equations. We give you eight equations with five unknowns, and that's how we get to this point where we have five, 10 nines of availability. Uh, quickly, we can, we can start small, and then we can add accessors, and we can add more storage. And we can do this while the system is online and live. <laughs> because we can drop uh, storage and we can drop accessors, we can actually do upgrades of the software while the system is running. And we never lose, we never skip a beat. So how can we put it together for you? Uh, these are the types of customers that we talk to, uh, TV networks, cable, Hollywood, et cetera. 
We also talk to service providers, cable and satellite, telcos, uh, folks with user-generated content, social networks, there's a ton of video on social networks, online publications, a lot of different areas. And then basically, what are our applications? These are the typical applications we run into. Uh, we have media production play out, so we have integration with Avid and Adobe editing. So we take the raw source content, we do the finished content, we do content archive and backup. So if you've got a big LTO library somewhere, we can begin to replace that and begin to upgrade that. Uh, we work with cable uh, and telco MVPDs, cable systems, and we have a cloud DVR solution where we keep a single copy of everyone's DVR selection in the storage. And also user generated photo, audio, video content. So if you think of all the popular websites, we're in a lot of them. So where do we store all our iPhone videos? Right here. Social networks here, rich media content. Some more key applications is kind of a, a similar, similar kind of thing. And then we talk about user-generated content. If you think about Hollywood, there might be 20,000 publishers. User-generated content, there are billions of publishers. And this content is where we're seeing the biggest growth. Uh, we work with a lot of your incumbent uh, products. So editing, archive management, tier one storage, ingest, media asset management. We work with a lot of these companies and a lot more that I couldn't fit on the chart. Sorry about that. And so what are the reasons why you should go with us? Total lower cost of ownership. Much lower cost per terabyte per gigabyte than RAID storage. We scale up from petabyte to exabyte. So if you ever get to a point where you can't go any further with your RAID, we can take it from there and keep going. Uh, hybrid storage, we're the only company that offers on-prem and off-prem storage with hybrid. We have built-in security, and that's really important. When we do the striping and the spraying of data, we're also encrypting that data. So if anybody finds your disk drives and tries to get your information, no way. There's no way they're going to be able to pull it out. Uh, we have uh, cloud uh, storage economics. So we've got multiple ways of, of providing it. We've got a high availability, we've got lower availabilities, we've got high, uh, high throughput, lower throughput, and we can uh, provide your uh, a, a price that fits your pocketbook and application. And lastly, there's not a mirror. We don't have a main copy and a backup copy. Because it's sprayed across with those eight equations and five unknowns, we never lose a drop. Uh, there are, I think, more grains of sand in the universe than there are lost bits in our system. So, and it sounds like baloney, but we actually have the data to back it up. Uh, there are no black boxes, and uh, we have, we work with Amazon S3 API, OpenStack Swift. We've got a couple of other interfaces. And um, I'd like to thank you all for coming in. And if you have any questions, please let me know. All right, got some questions here. You want to applaud? Go ahead, applaud. You did a great job. All right. Well, thanks very much. And now I'll turn it over to the, uh, the drawing. Well, hold on. We must have a few questions. We always have questions, right? Anybody who's got their hand up? Somebody? Nobody? Did he Not answer it all? you challenge me on the 10 nines? Come on. Anyone? You want to open it up? Should we ask about the election, the economy? All right, we have a question. So it sounds like it's more of a RAID and kind of like user space software, right? Not necessarily a RAID, but kind of accomplish the same thing without the scaling problems. Is that correct? Yes, yes. We have, to uh, paraphrase, it sounds like a RAID, but it's, it's more than a RAID. We use erasure coding, which is a different type of algorithm. We have a similar technique, but RAID replicates disk drives in a cluster, and we replicate the slices of information that get sprayed across the multiple disks. So if we lose an entire disk, for example, we've got that information redundant somewhere else. So that disk goes out of service and we'll just take the information that was on that disk and push it, push it over to another location. And so our accessor handles that. Have you set up any of these systems for any government, law enforcement, or high security uh, agencies? and uh, what have been some of the challenges that you've run into? 
That's a great question. Do we have law enforcement? Do we have security camera and so on? Uh, one of our, uh, we have a, a group that is dedicated entirely to federal and state government. And I can't tell you what they do because they won't tell me. But <laughs> there's an awful lot of data that they work on. And we are doing security camera video. Security camera video is growing by leaps and bounds as we all know. Every street corner has got a security camera on it. Police officers have body cams and so on. And we are working with those kinds of customers, absolutely. Okay, that is the time.